Hello guys, uh, welcome to the third podcast of Mindmakers. Uh, today with me are once again Pramod Kumar Varavalli and Sunanda Vashisht. How are you guys doing? Good, good. How are you, Adit? Pretty good. I'm feeling very tolerant today. <laughs> <laughs> He's setting the things up for the podcast, but hey guys, we've made it into the third week. <laughs> so I think we're doing pretty well. We uh, survived. We survived, yes. Um, it's, yeah. it's, it's been good going. Uh, very interesting couple of weeks. Uh, the articles have met, some, met with some good response. Uh, we had uh, Obama's India visit, we had the Delhi elections, um, all that happened in the last two weeks. Although if you look at the Indian TV studios, all that we had was Delhi elections, you know, and you almost felt like Delhi had some 500 seats or something, the way they were discussing it. Delhi is <laughs> India and India is Delhi. Uh, yeah, you are you uh, reframing Devkant Barua statement? I, <laughs> I, I remember when Jharkhand elections happened, mm-hmm. just... Um, you know, um, a couple of uh, months ago. Mm -hmm. And I remember when the results were being declared, I was on my Twitter feed telling everyone, hey, Jharkhand is getting the elections, the results are being declared today. And people were like, huh? Oh, okay. (laughs) To me, Jharkhand is a lot more important than Delhi. But then, be as it may, this is how... um, Delhi is where the studios are. Delhi is where the studios are. But Delhi Delhi, the studios are in Noida, which is in Uttar Pradesh. (laughs) It's closer. It's closer to... uh, It's it's where the action is. Yeah. Noida is closer to Delhi than it's closer to Lucknow. (laughs) But uh, be that as it may, you know, uh, it's come up with interesting results. It's had a record high mandate and... uh, two days we are recording this on sunday in two days we should have the results so uh, we, we have already made our well i should rephrase this huh. adit kapadia has already made his um uh, prediction on this thing. Well, on the it first was, it was a pre poll. Yeah, it was a uh, the pre the pre poll based the pre-poll. on the unscientific, <laughs> unscientific um, yes. <laughs> but 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 still, you know, I mean, the post- I, I would at this point, I would really like our um, uh, listeners to go to our first podcast and listen to what Adit's um, <laughs> or predictions analysis, were exactly, <laughs> and how, uh, how right or wrong they how be, right be, or wrong they were. But be. but again, you know, I I did say after the post poll, it, it it's a lot closer. I mean, yeah. you know, than what it looked like uh, uh, the campaign the campaigns heated up you know there were some uh, issues some some good things being said some uh, the bad things being said some blunders being made ultimately and, it became a personality clash yeah and anyways i mean we'll see and we'll we'll do a special podcast about reviewing the delhi elections but that was that once so, the results are out on the 10th so we hopefully will do it a day yeah, after but, but, that yeah a day or maybe a couple of days, couple of days you, see, you see we just don't want to do uh, a quick result on what happened and you know because th- the story is not just among the seat you have to see what's the vote share yeah. and if there is any national picture which is to be extrapolated from the results or not. I agree I agree and so it will take about a day or two after the results right. for us to do that podcast so, so we'll, we'll see how it works out but but uh, but today's podcast I mean we're doing a couple of interesting topics uh, we saw President Obama talking about religious tolerance and he mentioned India so yeah. we thought it would be a good time to talk about that and the second part about of the podcast is also going to be uh, about Bihar elections and, and how tolerant are we or whether are. Bihar is going to have any <laughs> elections or not <laughs> if I should that's what I should rephrase anytime soon and the, mm. the current fiasco so we have an interesting lineup for you and uh, part one will start with the religious tolerance debate tonight's pod- podcast we want to talk about the, um, the recent uh, observations made by President Obama <laughs> in India at a town hall meeting and then again a, a kind of a, you know, a clarification he made at the prayer meeting with um, in the presence of uh, Dalai Lama. We wanted to talk about uh, mm-hmm. about our concept of uh, tolerance and where we see a lot of difference there. Uh, especially uh, my personal opinion is that that was made um, after receiving several delegations, several representatives of the civil society a lot of NGOs who have, um, you know, taken up upon themselves to develop India at any cost, you know. Or reading a lot of New York Times editorials. Uh, well, you know, New York Times, I would say I, uh, more than that, it's uh, the often uh, less quoted human rights lobby, you know, that uh, makes the representations about saving India away from the dungeons that we live in uh, day, day <laughs> out. So, Sunanda, uh, w- what are your thoughts on this, uh, you know, so-called religious yeah. tolerance uh, lobby? I find this whole topic really a joke. Honestly, I feel like laughing when somebody asks me how tolerant is India. 
It just is such an oxymoron. Well, I, let me ask you, how tolerant is the little just tolerance lobby then? <laughs> it's unbelievable to me that, um, you know, that somebody could say that India is not tolerant. It, having said that, I mean, one will not, uh, most of our uh, listeners and everybody knows the past and we'll probably not delve into it as much. Um, but having said that, United States president does not say anything off the cuff. I do not believe it. And if he does, he shouldn't. So when he brought that remark in between, sitting in the presence of the Dalai Lama, it just sounded so ironic. I mean, the Dalai Lama not only has found refuge in India, he runs his government from India, has been doing it for more than 50 years. And this is the only country in the world that will give refuge to the Dalai Lama. And the only country in the world which fought against China, the country that the United States keep talk, uh, keeps talking about. And that was 50 years ago when we were just independent. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Mind you, I, that, I, I, I would love to see President Obama's views about tolerance, religious tolerance of China. Nah, or Saudi Arabia. Also I mean, Saudi right Arabia. after he went. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I think he didn't just get it all right. He stood there in Shreveport Auditorium and gave Indians a lecture on uh, how it should we should be tolerant and everything. And then he went but, right straight to Saudi Arabia. For I mean, no, what, that, what, uh, so you're su suggesting that he's fearful of um, you know making these comments about China? Uh, is that what you're saying? Skeptical, Adi? fearful. I mean, there could be a lot of words used, but clearly he's not making. There is some part of him which is not. First part is should. Is China religiously intolerant or not? So he was fearless because of our lack of tolerance or because of our tolerance? Because of our tolerance. So or you could, also, you could also say that he was fearless because he probably assumed that India would take his comments with, uh, like would understand his comments or so would that not. So that means argue. we are tolerant? Yeah, we are. Absolutely. So okay. He actually proved his point. He proved our point, what we, what we had been saying. The fact that after Obama's <coughs> remarks in Shreveport, in Delhi and in National Breakfast Meeting, people, all they are doing are writing op-eds and um, doing podcasts like us and not doing anything more on the streets, and says how tolerant Indians no, are. No, I also saw a program where someone was saying that you should also understand that this is coming from a Nobel Peace, uh, Nobel Peace Lord. I and I mean, I, I didn't know how to react. But I think Charles Crothammer nailed it the best when he said uh, that this was a ridiculous comment in this are these are the comments he made in the meeting in the US where he said that India is one of our strongest allies in the sub in this in South Asia is uh, is a democratically uh, you know is a democratic country uh, has has seen transfer of power really smooth and pretty much one of the few stable it's government a beacon, of, beacon, of beacon of democracy and, and has stood by the US yeah. so no, no the difference between a statesman and why, why I was uh, a little bit disappointed with Obama is that this speech he made or the 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 uh, the mention of uh, different religions having different sorts of uh, sort of uh uh, you know, bad past. Uh, he did mention Christian faith also. Uh, I think he's he's begun taken heat for that uh, the past yeah, a few, lot of it, yes. few days. Because but, people but are saying that, that same, um, crusades happened 600 exactly, years ago. Exactly. The same same uh, speech, at least in part, he could have replicated back in India because I don't know if Indian Christians know that not just the Spanish, uh, Spanish Inquisition, but the Portuguese Inquisition in India was also equally brutal. Brutal, exactly. Yeah. And, and I mean, let's not, you know, the, he was saying that, uh, you talking about Christian extremism or yeah. something but Islamic extremism is also a reality in this in this day and age you know in Saudi Arabia you you're having and, and Saudi Arabia is not your I mean, I'm not comparing Saudi Arabia with ISIS but Saudi Arabia is not a tolerant society no, but Saudi Arabia is no different from ISIS at all. What is the difference between Saudi Arabia and ISIS? They, um, ISIS follows Sharia and uh, Saudi Arabia follows Sharia. ISIS beheads people. Um, um, Saudi Arabia beheads people. ISIS no, has no tolerance no, 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 for no, no, but any Saudi other Arabia thing. sentences and then beheads. Okay. <laughs> ISIS doesn't sentence. Okay. Yeah, please, I, ISIS please, you should. <laughs> and, and I don't think uh, a lot of uh, world leaders go to... By the way, ISIS things. has oil and Saudi has oil. Maybe not the same thing. There is really no difference. There is really... there. Uh, there, there, I mean, there are differences. I mean, well, uh, for uh, the ruler of ISIS will not get the same orbits as the king of Saudi Arabia got. Yeah. But yeah. you know, that, that that's just said in a lighter way. And obviously, we are not comparing Saudi Arabia to ISIS. There are some, you know, some parts of Saudi Arabia which are not similar to ISIS. But my point is, why not address this issue? No, yeah, I mean, many, on. many times, many times, I've been here in this country for 15 years. Many times, you know, you'd hear a familiar knock on the 
a door you go to see if it's a you know male or a fedex guy you see uh, really well groomed uh, young guy with a bible in his hand um sometimes a girl but very many times a, a, a guy um talking about their mormon faith or their own faith and and i i would explain to them also that we come from a different civilization try try to talk, talk about similarities and give them a cup of coffee and leave in you know, i i've had many such experiences um but have i ever commented whether uh, you know the, the same person shows up 10 times you know who don't take no for an answer you know he will he probably will say that he is really nice even though i really make horrible tea yeah. you know so not such nice people you know yeah. you should commend them for their effort Absolutely. to win my soul yeah, yeah. but i wear two souls <laughs> <laughs> i can't be one like that you know the us needs to know that the game has changed this is not uh, a naive um you know uh, uh, lungi wearing uh, indian uh, you know dhoti wearing guy anymore you know it's uh, also i think obama's greatest problem is that he will justify <clears throat> extremism and go to any extent to justify it yeah. in order to say that islamic fundamentalism is nothing big all religions have seen it first of all all religions haven't seen it um religions that originated in india haven't seen inquisitions and um uh, you know crusades mm. be as that may be but in any case you cannot justify saying that all religions have done this yeah. we have to face the problem as leader of the free world he has to face the problem as it is on a lighter note i would love to i'm i'm a jain so i would love to for obama to define jainism crusades in jainism i know where <laughs> so, were the crusades in jainism no i i, so, I think again uh, being an academic that he is a scholar i i said i think he did make a course correction in that play, uh, what is that meeting called breakfast meeting national with breakfast the, prayer with meeting with the dalai lama yeah, i think yeah. he did Happens every year. he did go back in his study he, and uh, bring no, out a see, few more no 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 you know the speech was if you look the whole the whole speech or something there were parts of it that were relevant but our point is not that our point see when a us president makes a speech it's also about what he says and what he omits or what he leaves out yeah. you know the fact that he had to bring this up right now and the fact that he got flack from people on his own country you know i mentioned charles crotham a, a lot of my american friends you know they are telling that this is the, the he did not have to bring india in this yeah. discussion there was no need to and but we should go a little further. other than that there is this complete there is this whole effort of painting india as an intolerant society we may laugh it off i mean as indians we just go back to india all the time and uh, mm. it just seems a joke to us but the fact is that to the outside world india is being um, painted as an intolerant society where minorities are persecuted i mean considering where pakistan on one side and bangladesh on one side we are being told that minorities are being persecuted is a joke but the fact is that narrative is being sold somewhere there is a market for this narrative and there is no way you can go away from that narrative because on one side you you will have great achievers like abdul kalam who I, in my opinion has been one of the best presidents ever in the history of uh, india's democracy received at the same time you still have element i have a slight quibble with you on that i still rate rajendra prasad is the best ha uh-huh. I, i would say i would i would uh, say because of the Uh, the, the technical accomplishment of Abdul though. Kalam obviously was my best growing up. I mean, I have yeah. lived through him and Pratibha <coughs> Patil and Shankar Dayal, Shankar Dayal Sharma and all that. But I think part two of this, we should discuss also what Sunanda wrote about the religious conversion, religious tolerance in India, and how it's being taken forward. I I, I don't mind people getting converted. Yeah, you know, uh, as long <laughs> as they convert back. Yeah, so let you know, let's let's take this up in part two. Okay, and uh, let's see about. so the religious conversions uh, debate which you had written very uh, very nicely in our article that there's no level playing field mm. uh, can you talk a little bit about what level playing field is is there something in the dictionary that says that if you convert 100 people will convert back 1000 people no, no, uh, are we talking I, just a number game for an economy to understand number game also but i was saying that india has opened its home and heart for every faith for every religion for every persecuted um group or anything be it um, parsis be it tibetans be it anybody and india has given them refuge but not put any uh, restrictions on them following their faith and propagating on the indian soil so this has happened for a while this has happened for a, the longest time now hindus suddenly find themselves at the receiving end they feel that they are pitted against 
two fastest growing faiths in the world christianity and islam so which are fighting if, each other by the way so why why do hindus need to be worried <laughs> see i don't see Some, why why we have to be worried about this conversion game because do you do you want quality no, or do you want quantity no because i'll tell you in a democracy at a personal level it doesn't matter how, how does it matter which faith gains more followers or anything but at a societal level in a democracy where your influence is dependent on the numbers there are certain hindu groups which feel that our numbers are diminishing so our influence is diminishing no, and i would so like what they say, demand yeah. is um, equal level um, playing field they say if the other group is allowed to um, convert then we should be no, allowed no, to no, convert you are not letting the minority speak <laughs> <laughs> Ah. <laughs> I, you know that there is as this is one thing which i protested against like anything the mm-hmm. granting jains the minority status i mean i don't even know what what <laughs> were people from my community thinking and what the hell was congress thinking mm-hmm. on this podcast <laughs> on this podcast at least there is level playing field you uh, have to fight a... your way <laughs> fight your way in. no my 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 point was something different i think you're talking about uh, you're talking about more of a spiritual level and a societal level there is another point also which is being made by a lot of people that is the conversion things are they going uh, a pawn in a larger political battle are you creating you know clusters of a particular religion <coughs> b particular religion to care to have spheres of political influence there is disproportionate amount of resources that are getting pumped into india mm-hmm. via ngos whether they are they are mm-hmm. um, you know siding with the tribals or siding like like for example the kudakulam nuclear power plant yes. where the right. then uh, upa government actually said openly that some um, agencies in the united states were uh really unhappy because the indians were giving all these contracts to the russians and mm. the french and the us was not getting into that uh, economic game mm. hence they used the local population which had probably converted 30 40 50 years ago um, during the british exactly. time to say that there is no le- politics use that leverage is being very nice yeah, yeah there yeah, is there is I'm something saying. yeah there that, is something i think it societal i mean there could be some societal and social impacts as well see the conversion game is different in different cities in mumbai ahmedabad delhi it might not be the same way as it is in kanyakumari uh, malappuram Uh, Assam or tribal areas or West Bengal, you know. So, so we have to we have to understand that the religious conversion game. You can't just have like one blanket conclusion on. And there are there is two there are two ways you can handle this. A stop all conversions. Say we're not going to have allow any conversions hmm. either. Into no, no, but I, I don't understand. No, no, I don't understand. First, let me just finish this quick point. So, if you are going to stop that, then at the same time you are going to say that oh, in a liberal democracy, you cannot say that. You Absolutely. cannot stop convergence. You have to do this. Then make it a level playing field. Then let uh, everyone define convert. that. Define that, Sunanda ji. I mean, that, what is level? Do you want more resources? To, let's that, say, for example, means, let's say that for means I, as I had said in my uh, this thing, Hinduism is a is a non proselytizing religion. Most people who feel discomforted by um, hindus proselytizing is hindus themselves so to think that they have neither resources to match up with either church no, no, or it's like technology no 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 I, i don't buy this argument because it's like technology it's it's somebody has beaten you at the game they are better at it they have more resources because they have uh, various different they have, advantages they have early movers advantage uh-huh. they have moved in early and they, my they question came is in... different is this a game <clears throat> It is. It, it's it's a game, but there is no end to it. Hmm. That's what I'm coming. You know, to. you can't you can't no winning, tell. Losing, but there is a you game. can't you can you can legislate at the state level. You can even look at the national level, like the Israelis have done. Israelis actually ban Christian missionaries to even uh, probably have the same kind of advantage they probably have in Syria. Yeah. You know, a lot of these Christian missionaries are now uh, brutally getting killed. Uh, Syria had allowed them to come in, not Israel. Mm. you know but the us does not talk about that but, uh, that's large my larger point is if you can't beat them at the game why don't you join them there is many hindu organizations there are many buddhist organizations that are also now in that uh, mode where I, i have seen numbers come in many people who converted to christian faith in india are coming back to hinduism in droves because they have been denied the reservation you know, benefits yeah. now let me finish that uh-huh. adit ek minute uh, because this is an important point that the constitution of india uh, and this is why i love ambedkar so much I, i am an upper caste guy who has adored ambedkar all of his life because he knew that you cannot uh, play this game you know india had never played that game before it's a new world we we lost out uh, after several hundreds of years and ambedkar came in and said well you know let's all accept and hinduism raised its hand and said yes 
there was discrimination, what can we do about it? And then proportionally in a democracy, 25% of the net resources should go to the people who are feeling disenfranchised and who are feeling discriminated, which is Fair where I, I say that the reservation policy, as long as there is Supreme Court of India, no matter how many, I've seen Christian missionaries, a friend of mine, good friend of mine, he, he laughed at me one day and said that, look, you know, they say that they are, uh, they belong to lower caste, but they actually worship uh, Jesus. Mm. I said, good. Mm. They come to the temple on Sunday. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, yeah, Christian you know missionaries are also so naive. I feel sorry for them. You know, they, they mm. feel they sit at their home, raise millions of dollars. You know what the British government did? You know, there was a huge debate when this Chandrayaan mission was going on. Mm. And some English newspaper said that, you know, we are pumping so many millions of pounds into India, our aid is so much and and look what they are spending uh, towards. They are sending a uh, rocket to the moon and they are, you know, so use it. I mean, how can beggars uh, send rockets to the moon? That was the whole uproar. And yeah. you know, who who put a, uh, you know, a, a reply back? It was Pranam Mukherjee, the present president of India, who was then the finance minister. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said, well, if that is the case, then you know all of these uh, NGOs who are uh, Britain-based uh, are now in blacklist. He put them, and he coyly went away. And uh, later, the uproar was so uh, huge that they cut the British aid to India by half. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> so I know. British and Americans are so nice. Are good people. Huh. Very good people. Good in science and technology, which is why I have admired them for. But Winston Churchill. Yeah. When the guy was a bloated. You know, I don't know what he was. I know. Might he was disappoint a lot of, you might uh, <laughs> you might disappoint a lot of Anglophiles when you No, say that. but I like George Bernard Shaw. That's not the point. The point is No, when this you're... was on a lighter note. Huh. But no, co coming back to the conversion debate, what you were saying, you know, that uh, the, the the game is completely different. The, so I don't... how do we no, the question still is that how do we make it a level playing field so that Hindus don't feel left out in this game? Don't think of it as a field. Think hmm. of it as a spear. Hmm. You're looking at an angle, it goes around. What goes around comes around. No. You know, you see your people here in the United States who are looking up to yoga, who are now looking at karma, who are looking at the concepts that Eastern civilizations have taught. No, no, 70% no, no, of Europe has turned atheist. And they're going back to their pagan uh, that is the, uh, religions. Yes, that is why so, that is why the church is looking towards India and, and other places also, in no, Asia. Another thing you also people. need to do is name them and shame them. You see all these the, uh, conversion activities that happen in villages in, in certain parts of India. There are lots of videos uploaded on YouTube about what kind of nonsense is being said and stuff. Make this a part of like show it to people. Like my normal liberal thinking is, people. My only point is that if you have no trouble with, if you are not going to oppose um, conversion, you should not oppose Garvapsi as well. Garvapsi is as legitimate as conversion is. Garvapsi itself is conversion. Reconversion. In no, sense. it's conversion. Yeah. You know, in a in a seventy or seventy five years lifespan, you start out by having very few religious uh, connotations in your life. I'm not talking about the Ovesi <laughs> term, that you are all born Muslim, no. You are all born with certain values imbibed by your parents, then you take on religion, then some, at some point some bad thing happens, you turn to, into an atheist for whatever reason, you know. And then they start uh, seeing that good and bad exist. I would say um, Hindus who are feeling threatened should basically start their own small temple where you can clearly, I mean I can develop a website for them. I can tell them how many people come to their site, you know, have a puja paddhati, get that uh, people, uh, person. And convert? And convert, yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. what's so big deal about it? Why I should know. We get... I, mean, I, think, I, I think they should just learn. Much ado about the... nothing. I know, no, I, think yeah, yeah. It's not my... I think they should just learn from the leaders of the game. They should ah, just learn from the if church if you're, if you're and learned, convert. If you have learned about modern science and technology and you have started somewhere, why can't you learn about modern missionary tactics? Yeah, I guess that, that's an interesting note to end on. Ah. We, we, are, we are agreeing yet not agreeing with each yeah. other. So <laughs> with that, we move on to part three, but a fascinating debate on religious tolerance and conversion. <laughs> so part three will be about Bihar, elect uh, Bihar elections or whether there will be elections in Bihar. <laughs> hey guys, so... Uh, you know, we had a heated discussion on religious tolerance and religious conversions and things. So, 
uh, we, we, choose a, we chose a different topic for part three and it was more to do with uh, the politics, domestic politics that's happening in India. We saw interesting scenes in Bihar right now where uh, the JDU MLAs uh, or at least some of the MLAs have elected Nitish Kumar as the leader and the Bihar chief minister is in Delhi and he's saying that, uh, you know, he still has the numbers to, you know, basically say that Nitish Kumar cannot be the chief minister. And he what, what really happened? Wasn't Manji uh, Nitish Kumar's protege? I mean, <laughs> Manji he really doesn't have a huge, I mean, um, yeah, presence, political presence. Of he lost the elections in May 2014. But yeah. then again, but for <laughs> most of JDU lost. Mm. So. I know. So no, Manji, just, Manji turned into a manja. I know. The kind of thing you uh, use for but, but on a lighter note. You know, no, but when he was this thing, I never ever thought that this is a guy who will have the guts to stand up to Nitish. Well, on a lighter note, in the studios, in Indian media studios in 2009 or 10, Nitish Kumar was touted as the man who could be the next Prime Minister of India. Right now, he can't even be the Chief Minister of Bihar. Now he's trying to be the um, uh, leader of his own party. Uh, leader of his own party. <laughs> so, I don't know what happened. What Tilak Topi ka funda kya gaya, kaha gaya, kya hua, you know. I know. Uh, well, well, they're part of all, he's part of the Janta Parivar also, right? Uh, yeah. Was, so was all, one of the original. He is the, uh, he's in Janta Dal United Parivar. and he's also a founding member of the new Janta this, new Jan disunited Parivar. Yeah, <laughs> so, Janta Parivar also. Samajwadi Janta Party was the name. By the way, you haven't heard of that, you know. We haven't heard of the party at all. They were supposed to do a big rally and stuff like they that. They stopped after the wedding in the family, after Lalu's. So, I think the, the bride and bridegroom might, must be fighting. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> because that's why they're not together. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the stalwarts they had HD Devagoda and Om Prakash Chautala and all these people? No, I mean the biggest news that has come out of the Parivar was the wedding news. Uh -huh. After the wedding, I haven't heard anything. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was HD the biggest Devagoda news. HD Devagoda has applied for leave. <laughs> <laughs> From? From that uh, United Parivar Achha. at this point. He's on PTO. Who knows? Kumara Swami might s split the JDS also and take two MPs out of the three they have. Or I don't know. Do they have two MPs or three? I don't know. They have two MPs. Two MPs. So take one out yeah, of the Basically himself. But he so. forgets <laughs> counting himself sometimes. <laughs> so, but but no, you know, the biggest this thing was about uh, when we went through this whole VP saying and all Janta Dal um, this thing. They used to say because there used to be so many splits at that time. So mm. they used to say the joke was Janta Dal grows as it splits and splits as it grows. Mm. So Amiba. <laughs> so, no, we used to call thing. call it Janta Dal. Janta, Janta Dal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but anyway, how did Manji get to the point that he had to revolt to... Um, uh, I, I think the news coming he in... He feels slighted or what happened to him? Probably. I mean, he enjoys being the chief minister of Bihar, I think. That's the only conclusion I can think of. The whole thing about this is that Nitish comes across so petty. Mm -hmm. And for a man who was being, who many people who I have a lot of regard for, um, even before Narendra Modi's candidate. About the people had or commented. are you talking about Nitish you have a great regard No, for. no, no. I'm talking about the commentators who I have great regard as. Dear Lord. Used to think that, you know, um, he is a prime ministerial candidate. But that tells you so, more, so much more about the commentators. The commentators, than they, really, really. About the, But about from Nitish. there to the point, he's come across so petty that he would resign after this thing, which was just a sham. Mm. after the elections and then put this puppet in his place and mm. now um, you know he wanted to do Sonia Gandhi Manmohan Singh um, unfortunately there are not many Manmohan Singhs Manmohan Singh is just one I, I think uh, my indications uh, what I'd looked at is uh, now in six months, JDU, Congress, and Lalu have to go into an alliance. No, I mean, no but, but they're what. already in an alliance for no, the but then, but then, but then, who is going to be the chief minister uh, candidate? If it is Rahul Nitish Rani. Kumar, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know, um, you know, some Fulvati, some Mayavati, some, <laughs> some uh, you know. No, but I'll tell you something. This is and this is what I was thinking. Assuming you know all the exit polls of Delhi are pretty much predicting a route of Congress. Um, I, I don't know. Zero to minus two. I don't know what <laughs> minus two is. Chanakya polls is zero to minus two. I'm not sure how you get minus two. Plus or minus two to be fair to them. <laughs> but but no, the thing is, I, I, I think the con I, I don't know if the Congress is going to do better than what they are saying or something. But is is that going to take a huge impact on that when they go for alliances in other states of the country? Yeah, well? yeah absolutely. Because they are staring at irrelevance in a a place where Congress was considered virtually undefeatable for 10 years when Sheila Dixit was the chief minister. 15 years. For 15 years. Yeah. Well, I mean, 
I am I'm saying 10 years because in 1999 BJP still yeah. win, won all the seven Lok Sabha seats yeah. because the nation national popularity of the BJP was at all and an all time high. Yeah. But I'm talking about especially after the 2000s, you know. Yeah. So I mean, th- this is this is amazing. I, we thought they couldn't sink lower than 44 seats. But the route of Congress has been amazing. I mean, for that they are responsible themselves. I I'm mean, sure. They have to look inward and they have to understand that. Um, Rahul Gandhi is not someone who will um, bring them out of this crisis. They have to find new leaders. They have to find a thing. They have to get rid of the dynasty. But the the emergence or re-emergence of Ahmadmi Party, even if they in the next two days don't win the elections, as the fulcrum for all of these discarded socialists, leftists, and uh, people who have high moral values, as mm-hmm. they call themselves, uh, they are going to be. Um, I would say coming around with uh, into uh, an alliance with Amadmi party uh, you know i would rather uh, want to see Amadmi party form the government and fail rather than constantly be a, a but here is where i disagree to you slightly i mean sure the form the government and fail is one of the things i mean you know the, the, the governance is not their strongest point and whatever the result may be i don't think Amadmi party the influence that it had in delhi and for, to some extent in Punjab, in the Lok Sabha, I don't see it having in other parts of India. Probably some pockets of urban India or something. Because A... I think the million dollar question right now in Indian political scene is that how will Ahmadmi Party react now after it gets into the saying that they win the elections and they get into the governance seat and the pilot seat, how they will um, turn out? No one knows. Are they going to get into that dharna mode? I I know I I sort of know what their economics is going to be. I sort of know w- where they are tilting towards. But how is their day to day governance going to be? That is a big what million if, dollar question. What no if one they knows. don't form the government and uh, Kejriwal is still the leader of opposition? Do you think he'll continue with his dharnas? Um, he is not. He is the guy who's not going anywhere. That much is sure. He is around there. Uh, there was no, no, no. I didn't ask you that. Mm. I'm sure he's there to stay. I am mm. asking if he's going to if if he's going to take a break from all this, or if he's just going to go to another state and do the same things. What he did in Delhi. No, that is why I wanted him in power. You know, if he stays in Delhi, if he uh, sticks to his uh, seat and he has to show this time. I know that I I'm sure they're smart enough not to do the same mistake of doing dharnas mm-hmm. and uh, resigning. They will stay and they will completely follow the West Bengal model uh, you yeah. know they will have a lot of uh, businessmen support them on the sly wow. uh, talk about all of these uh, uh, you know good uh, you know left of liberal uh, left liberal uh, sort yeah. of policies yeah. but at the same time you know if they are in opposition they'll con- they'll constantly be a thorn uh, moving forward and a fal- mm-hmm. kind of an attraction point for all of these other discarded political parties yeah. mm-hmm. but I think I- the next logical place for Ahmadmi party now is Punjab yeah mm-hmm. that's what I see them that's where I see see them going mm-hmm. although the elections aren't for next two years next two years next two years so but i do see them and uh, who knows a lot can change in punjab in two years yeah it's a long time it's but long but but for, again, two years by that by two years everyone would have noticed what they would have done in delhi yes so yeah. so and, and, and delhi is it's interesting you know the the election what ha- what happened in the election or what happens in two weeks and two days i'm sorry yeah. uh, but but yeah but coming back to before we wrap it up on bihar i mean i hope we don't see another situation like what we saw in 2005 when buta singh was the governor <laughs> when he you know spectacularly ignored the mandate invited congress bihar to bihar remains a fluid situation for now i think it's going through a chaotic stage yeah. before um, a bjp comes with the full majority i think president's rule and with uh, Manji as the uh, caretaker chief minister, minister would be right. would be the solution, solution right. for now. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I think that would be the solution yeah. until now. elections. Let's see. Well, I think that that we're at, come to the end of the podcast. Um, that sums it up for this week. It's been an interesting week, uh, politically, uh, socially, and st- on strategic affairs as well. We'll be back next week to talk about a lot more, uh, primarily about the Delhi elections. Um, you can follow us on uh, Twitter and keep track of our tweets at at m y i n d m a k e r s uh, and you can also like our facebook page <clears throat> our our individual accounts are uh, i tweet at a s k 0704 uh, sunanda tweets at s u n a n d a v a s h i s h t 
and promote tweets at at p buravalli so at p b u r a v a l l i uh, we look forward to being in touch with you uh, getting your feedback um, and addressing any questions that you guys have on this so uh, keep tuning in keep logging into mind makers and uh, um, if you if you would like to contribute for us you know we would love to have you on board as 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 a writer or as uh, on the podcast as well thank you and have a great day